Hello, everybody. Welcome to uh, another uh, session at the Art Hub here, uh, the online version. Uh, so today we are going to be talking about a couple of different techniques following a specific book. This is a little different than the book that we follow, but it has a lot of the basic fundamentals. Uh, so the book that we followed is the Charles Barge book, which you guys could actually uh, see at the beginning of the course. The title is there. And the technique that we're actually looking at today is sight sizing, okay? Or trying to do things according to their actual size, all right? So uh, first things first, the material that we're going to use is going to be a uh, 2H pencil. It's going to be a 2B pencil. You can see them right here, 2H and 2B. Uh, I'm also going to be using a sandpaper right here, a kneaded eraser right here. I might not use a kneaded eraser a lot. And I'm going to be using my X-Acto knife to sharpen my um, actual pencils themselves, okay? Uh, so, first things first, my 2H pencil is completely, completely dull, okay? There's nothing to it. It's just really, really, really dull. Um, so, I mean, it's a brand new pencil pretty much. I'm going to just give you guys a little tip if you guys remember how to sand. Make sure there's a sharp edge, which is a shiny one. And there's a big edge that's not sharp. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to really gently and not speeding things up, start shaving part of our pencil away, okay? We might ask ourselves, why this fancy way? Why not use the good old pencil sharpener? And, you know, that's pretty much it. Uh, there's actually a pretty good reason for this, okay? Let's talk about that. So once we have our pencil pretty long and sharp right here, I'm going to go ahead and use the sandpaper. Let's get rid of that. And I am going to go all around. So I'm going to start actually to sharpen my pencil. One side, two sides, three sides, and four. This might actually uh, uh, break if you guys go too fast. Even if you guys sharpen too fast, this might actually break. So you want to make sure you're not sharpening too fast. All right. And both of my pencils kind of look like that. See? Really long tips. So the point of doing this is if you have a pencil that has a very short tip like this, most of your drawing is actually covered by the wood part of your pencil. So you cannot see, you cannot see, you cannot see. But if you have a skinny pencil like this, you could see most of your drawing. So you could see, you could see, you could see. So whatever you do, you could actually see better with a very sharp pencil, as opposed as if my tip was very short, you would only get to see the wood part of your pencil, all right? So just remember, it looks fancy for one, which is kind of cool. And for two, it actually serves a, a purpose, all right? I'll clean that off later. I'll leave that on the side. All right, you guys, so the technique of side sizing is kind of fun, okay? You could use it during life drawing session. You could do use it during still life sessions. Today, we're just going to use it with a reference, all right? So I'm going to get my 2H pencil because it's a little lighter. All right, people that side size, they actually carry, like side size all the time, they carry a specific tool everywhere they go. Sometimes it's... Uh, skewer sometimes it's a long little piece of wooden rod sometimes it's a long brush but pretty much anything long and straight will actually help you i just like to use a pencil because a pencil is what we will usually have for our drawing session all right um so what we do in sight sizing uh, let's say i had something this big that's my hand i would find the highest most point of my hand which is right here this middle finger right here and I would just do a line that goes from the hand to the finger. Now imagine you had a little person over there, okay? Imagine the, the person was actually real, but they were little. They were this big because they were actually models, okay? You would want to find the highest point of the model, which would be its head, and do a straight line. Find the lowest point of the model, which would be their feet, and do a straight line, okay? Uh, we are doing a bust, or it's a, a plain based bust, which is, has all these angles. This is kind of the way we want to see portraits. So this session, you guys, relates to the oil session. The oil session, if it's giving you a hard time, come back to the drawing session. They're kind of, they're both interconnected, okay? 
So you guys should be okay with it. All right, so what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna find the highest most point of the, of the cast here, which is actually a, a printout, and I'm just gonna translate that really lightly to my paper, okay? So I just wanna verify, all right, pretty good. That looks pretty good. You know, that's pretty much my line. Because the neck is out of the picture, I'm gonna assume there's no neck, even though there is, and I'm gonna use the, the chin meets the neck part to do the second line. That again, if I just do a straight line and I verify, ooh, it's pretty good. All right, it's pretty good. And that is the height of sight sizing, okay? That's, we got the highest point just by doing a straight line from this point and just translating it to the pencil, to the paper, sorry. And we got the lowest most point, which is this point right here. And I did a straight line that just came over here just to translate it to my drawing as well, all right? So that's how big my face is gonna be because now it's exactly the same size as the actual head that we have over here itself. All right, now finding the width. Finding the width is a little more complex than finding the heights. Finding the heights, you just have to do lines. You just have to do lines, throw them, lines, throw them, lines, throw them. Finding the widths, you have to find lines of relationship, okay? So I'm just gonna start my furthest point here. It doesn't really matter where I start, it just has to be in the picture. When I do a vertical line here, the furthest point is either gonna be the ear or the hair. The hair is gently further, so we'll, we'll use the hair as a reference, okay? It's that point right there, all right? When I use the back of the head, I'm gonna use my furthest point on the back of the head. You guys shouldn't move your pen, your paper once you're side sizing, but I put mine a little too close. So once I do the furthest point here, I will actually do the tip of the ear. All right, there we go. So the way artists measure, if you're using a skewer, if you're using a big piece of wood, if you're using a little rod, or if you're using a brush, it's gonna be the same, okay? So what you wanna do is you wanna put your thumb, okay? Your thumb is your measuring point. That's how far away my thumb is. Don't use the, the little tip of your thumb because that's a little chubby. So it actually puts a little extra on the front. So I'm just gonna use the fingernail, all right? And I buy them so they're not that big. So what you wanna do is anytime you do this, you wanna make sure that your measuring is consistent. Don't stretch your hand out, don't stretch your hand in. Just keep it as stretched out and as consistent as you can. So if I were to measure that furthest point, and if I were to measure that closest point, the furthest point would obviously be where my tip of my pencil is. And my furthest point would be just over that golden line, okay? That's actually, if I, if I were to move, uh, it, uh, by the way, the way I'm looking at it is, it's a little different than the way your the tablet is looking. So I'm just gonna use the tablet as the reference, okay? So you see that's the tip. Now I'm gonna go ahead and move my finger down. All right, just a little bit. And for my actual ear, this where my finger is, that would actually be the length, okay? Or the width, sorry. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna translate. It's gonna make sure it's pretty accurate right here. All right, pretty good. Now I'm gonna make sure that I translate this to over here. And this is very easily for me to actually see. So now I'm just gonna come back, remeasure right there, that looks pretty good. And I'm gonna go and I'm just gonna verify. And that looks pretty good, all right? So both of them look pretty good. They look pretty accurate with height wise. All right, you guys? So this is sight sizing. That's kinda, we, fit, we figure out the box of where our figure would be. And many artists would actually go in and just do your box. I don't, um, you know, these are the little things that I'm gonna just kind of separate from the Charles Barge drawing course, which is, you know, it's, it's a really good course. And if you need to do every single fundamental and every single plate, because the plates with them come with levels, I would say do every single one of them. If you guys already draw a bit and you guys just wanna challenge yourself and push your boundaries a little bit more, 
then just uh, skipping a little steps, it's okay. It's more of the practice of drawing that's really important, all right? So I'm not necessarily gonna box this in, right? But if you wanted to, you could just as easily do a vertical line and do a vertical line. And by doing this, I exactly said I would do what I said I wasn't gonna do, so. All right, now uh, I'm also gonna start finding other important points, okay? So let's find our furthest width, all right? So if I do just a vertical line, right here, so that vertical line here will tell me where the furthest point goes. And that obviously would be the hair, that kind of break on the hair. Uh, and now I want to find the furthest uh, right side, which is going to, I'm using this part of the ear. So if I do this part of the ear, that's going to be right about there. The funny thing with when you're sight sizing, your sight sizing boundaries tend to look small. You know, they tend to look like, oh man, I'm not gonna be able to fit this big head into this. Don't trust your brain too much. Just trust the logic of measurements and your observation skills, okay? If you decide to trust your brain a lot, uh, you might end up with a, some very fun, uh, weird things just because you refuse to do sight sizing, all right? So, that thing is out of the way. Now there's a there's a nice line that I want to find. You know, I want to find how low is my nose. I'm trying to find really important things, not not little things. I'm not trying to overdo my drawing with lines. And that's the thing with the Charles Bardet book that you're trying to find important lines. You're trying to find plumb lines. You're trying to find important angles. You could easily just do every single line here, like line. Line, 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 line. And by the end of the session, you guys are gonna be, you know, really confused because of so many lines, all right. So what I'm gonna do too, I'm also gonna find this high point of my chin here, which would, if I just do a vertical line, it would go somewhere here, just somewhere around here, all right. And um, after that, I mean, I have my highest point, which is this tip here. One thing I could also do is just use my thumb to measure how far is would a vertical line here, an imaginary vertical line there, be from the end of my picture. That would be roughly about where my thumb went, right here. I'm just gonna go back and verify. And that's pretty right, okay? So now I have <clears throat> most of my proper angles, most of the lines that I need, you know, Everything is pretty good. I I mean, this is for photographic accuracy. If I were doing some stuff at the studio, I usually just draw what I see, and it tends to be very close. It's just not 100% photographic accurate. And this is not 100%, but it is pretty close. And if you actually follow all of the Charles Barger book, you could actually do a uh, 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 whole photocopy of this thing, okay? So now, what I'm gonna end up doing is I'm gonna just look for angles, okay? I'm gonna do imaginary angles, okay? The thing with angles is, I always say this in the studio, angles are always correct, okay? The only thing with angles is that they're relative, okay? But they're always correct. There we go. And remember, that was the highest point, and if we follow this line, oh, what happens? It's supposed to be where it's supposed to be, okay? If I do another angle here, right here, I could just go ahead and repeat it. And if I do another angle here, I could just go ahead and repeat, okay? Angles are the most important thing. Angles is what really makes or breaks a lot of your drawings, you guys. So whenever you're doing angles, just make sure that you guys are always, always, always trying to double check them, okay? Double checking your angles is of utter importance, all right? So I'm gonna find this little corner here. That little corner to me is also quite important because in a in an abstract way, it is also the beginning of my brow line right here. So if I repeat this brow angle here, you know, I already have the beginning of my brow line. All right, so it looks pretty good. Um, big angles are in the picture. Uh, we know that this is the ear. The furthest most point over here is the ear. 
So just as I'm doing before, I'm just gonna start simplifying the head just through angles. And then once I push the hair, the hair is gonna get really close to this point of the ear, which I usually wouldn't do this dark, you guys, but I'm gonna do them just a little dark for you guys to see. I'm just gonna find that angle here. Now I'm gonna do a very subtle angle there. I'm gonna do a subtle angle here. And finally, somewhere around here, if I'm side sizing, I'm gonna do my other angles. I'm just repeating angles, you guys, that's all I'm doing. I'm almost, I'm trusting my eye and I'm just doing the same angles over and over and over again and just verifying it, okay? So here we go. The, the picture is roughly where it needs to be. You know, the hair looks like it's in the right place. Now, at this point, we are gonna go ahead and just build up your drawing. I mean, <laughs> that's, the, that's the most important thing. Oops, I think I did a little, a little no-no here, okay? This part here, the, the, um, the, um, the distance of the ear was not supposed to come to the end of the head. It was supposed to come to the end, edge of the head but not the end of the ear here, okay? So now, this is gonna do a, a, what appears to be a little change, but it's actually a big change. Now my brow's gonna go in a little bit, and little by little, um, my drawing is gonna change, all right? So let's, uh, let's find a plumb line, okay, guys? Plumb lines are really, really fundamental, and they're important. A plumb used to be a little weight that was held by, uh, sorry, a little string that was held by a weight, and it would give you a straight line. So whenever you guys are doing a plumb line, you kind of want to go like a scanner. Do, 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 and find a line that relates many things, okay? And one important line that I see here is this one here, okay? The plumb line tells us where, if I do a vertical line here, it'll tell me where my nose goes, the... Uh, the left of my nose, the right of my nose on the bottom part, and also the center of my lips. So just a little straight line gave me an abundance of information, right? And plumb lines are really important. In the Charles Bardet book, they always talk about how to look for your plumb lines, uh, which plumb line you know is the one that you should you should use, just because it mostly just connects many many things. So if I find my furthest left point, I put my finger there, that's my furthest left point, and I just put my finger on there, it would be somewhere here, all right? Now, if I go and I repeat that, it's gonna be somewhere there. So I'm just gonna come back, use my pencil, my finger, and verify. Pencil, finger, and verify. That looks pretty good. So now, what we're gonna do I'm just gonna verify one more time because this is gonna tell me where a lot of my stuff is gonna go. Pencil finger there, all right. I'm just gonna do a pretty nice vertical line. All right, here we go. Oh, really important, I forgot to tell this, uh, say this in the earlier part. When you're drawing, try to draw with your arm. Don't try to draw with the wrist. The wrist is a very small, accurate movement, but it's not a very long, big movement okay so try to draw with the wrist whenever you're you're drawing your plumb lines all right here we go so this is pretty much all set you know this is pretty much all set for the beginning of my bigger shapes all right so now that i found the size of the head or sorry, the, the side of the head here i could start figuring out just my angles all right so uh, one important thing is figuring out where that nose line goes. This nose line that goes right above, right about there, following a side sizing line. Just a straight line that should go somewhere right about there. All right. So if I find this, I'm pretty much all set for my drawing. Okay. I could pretty much just start doing an eye socket here. Was well, part of the eyelid slash eye socket part here. I could start doing more and more lines. I could 
start breaking in more lines. And I'm not afraid if I, some of my initial lines are not set in stone. I'm gonna leave them by the way, but if you are, uh, you want a more nice drawing, you could, have, you could always go in here and erase some of these angle lines. I don't, I don't think that's necessary for, for our cause. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna leave them. I'm gonna measure this angle here. I'm gonna try to replicate that angle there. You could always do a line, follow a line, repeat the line, follow the line, okay? The more lines that you guys do, just the more accurate this thing is gonna be. So now, this is the side. This is gonna be the side here of the nose right about there that's the base of the nose there we go make sure you guys do your little angle okay measure little angles here little angles there little angles there and just with a lot of these initial angles that we completed you guys are gonna see that most of the picture is actually falling into place, okay? So with a lot of these little angles, the picture is gradually going in place, going in place, going into place, all right? So that's just pretty much after sight sizing, finding the plumb line, finding horizontal lines, finding vertical lines. That is pretty much where we end up with, you know, just rendering at this point. It's having fun at this point. It's not being super stiff at this point is make sure you guys don't let your eyes trick you. Sometimes you think something is a vertical line when in reality uh, it's, a hor it's a diagonal line to the left, but just make sure that you guys always pay attention to those angles, okay? So I don't know if you've noticed this, but the way I'm measuring my angles, it could be one or two ways. It could either be by making your pencil, holding your pencil at an angle here, and then replicating that angle there, or doing a faux line or a fantasy line here, and just repeating that fantasy line here. Sometimes I do them both, you know, just go in with one and just verify with the other. That would work. Uh, really really good all right uh once we do this i'm going to just start throwing my lines you know just throwing some of my lines over here at this point i could eye most of the distances if you guys still feel that you guys have to be measuring your plates or your in this case the printout go ahead do that you know that's that's okay um later on just don't forget that you're not going to be able to do lines on a person Okay, like if you have an actual real person, like, all right, model Y is here, or model whoever came, uh, how are you guys gonna throw this plumb line on that model? Pretty hard, huh? But um, you guys could do the big angles of reference. Right now, most of the things that I'm doing is just to keep photographic accuracy, okay? That's all I'm doing, so almost do this enough times, you know, be great at doing a few photographic copies and then stop doing that. There's no need for you guys to do that. You guys um, have challenged yourself enough. After that, it's more of the way you simplify your drawings, the way you simplify, you know, the way you do things and not everything always, always, always has to be a photo replica. It has to be more of an interpretation unless you know that's your goal maybe your goal is to do one really good drawing and never do anything another drawing ever again that might be your goal and then in that case spend more time on this okay so basically guys i'm gonna leave it at there for you guys to practice at home make sure you guys find the right angles make sure you guys find the right structure the next time you come in uh this is just a matter of time. This is not a matter of, of technique. It's just a matter of time. You guys are gonna see that my drawing is gonna be uh, not render it at all, because that's gonna be part of our next session, but at least the drawing is gonna be complete, okay? So go ahead, you guys, have fun. 
Uh, next time you see the video, it looks like I'm gonna fast forward uh, maybe like 20 minutes or 15 minutes of just me drawing. You guys could spend more time. There's no time restriction here. Uh, and we're ready to go on to the next step, which is gonna be values, okay? So have fun, enjoy, and we'll see you guys sometime next week. We'll be posting videos a little bit more often rather than, than spacing them apart. So we'll probably post the next video for you guys uh, roughly about Monday, okay? Uh, watercolor will also go in uh, now and pretty soon you guys will get oil painting, but not today, all right? We'll have fun at home, render, and let's see what you guys end up with, okay? You guys could try this guy. The link of him is on the uh, on the on the classroom uh, link on the classroom uh, information. If you guys uh, want to do a different thing, but still try the same technique, it could be a hand, it could be a leg, it could be a foot. Just don't forget, you could always look at Charles Bar, which is in French, but Barge in English. You could look at his reference. Okay, uh, he has plates online. <clears throat> I always recommend to buy his drawing course, which is the actual book, but maybe just to get your feet wet, it's okay to get a reference from here and there, all right? <clears throat> all right, you guys, we'll have fun, uh, and shoot me your pictures over whenever you're done. All right, enjoy.